Mimi Guido and today's topic is digital media. Digital media is advancing at a rapid rate and technology is advancing at a rapid rate. It feels as if we're constantly updating or upgrading our software or devices. If you're watching this, then both you and I are part of a sector in society and the world that is fortunate enough to have access to and an understanding of the advanced digital media available at our fingertips. There are both positive and negative ways to look at these advances on a global scale. However, today I want to focus on the new and old divides that are growing wider as a result of digital media, potential issues with that concept, and how digital media can be used to diminish the divides that separate us. In its simplest form, digital divide is defined by Van Dyke as those who do and those who do not have access to new forms of information technology. This definition is problematic and the notion of digital divide has caused much confusion over the years. The idea of digital divide is much more complex than two defined groups with a gap between them or facing particular inequalities. There are many other varying and underlying factors such as access, materials, social and educational issues. These main types of inequality can be noted in digital divide research, however I found that there was a lack of theory to validate these claims, leading to a lot of generalisation. Digital divide originally focused on a lack of access. This is now considered binary and superficial. With many parts of the world now able to access information technologies, there has been a shift in dimension to education and the inequality of skills for usage. Hagatai used the phrase second level digital divide in her work which redefines the current approach to digital divide by focusing on differences in people's online skills. The following image created by Simon Kemp from the Next Web indicates current level of access to internet worldwide. The percentages are based on total number of internet users compared to total population. As you can see, the highest percentages are in Europe and Northern America and the lowest percentage is in Central Africa. This indicates that there is still merit to the analysis of digital divide in relation to access, however I find that the shift away from this is interesting. These findings affirm Hargitay's ideas and show that access to information technology is widespread, highlighting the growing of a new divide. With access becoming less of a focal point and education or skills becoming the main dividing factor. As we shift away from socio-cultural inequalities and focus on educational inequalities, we would see a change in the percentages. Whilst the highest inequality in education and usage may still be found in Central Africa, it should be noted that these inequalities would also be seen worldwide. Van Dyke refers to a deepening divide to emphasise the problem of digital inequality. He states that simply attaining access doesn't end the inequality or divide, but instead it begins when digital media is incorporated into everyday life. This point highlights that the improved level of access combined with the lack of education or understanding of the current technological advances we are experiencing does not bridge the gap and in fact deepens it. I personally have spent time living in Central Africa facilitating workshops in high schools in Tanzania. Side note, these two paintings behind me were actually painted by two young boys that I worked with. Anyway, as previously noted, Central Africa has the lowest percentage of access to information technologies worldwide. From my experience, a digital divide was evident during my time working here, not only with the students we taught, but also with the people we worked alongside. During the time that we had, we were able to share any knowledge that we had and assist in educating as best we knew how with the technology that was available to us. I believe this time, combined with the ability to continue to communicate via social media, is an example of how we can diminish the divides between us. Although that face-to-face -face time and those lessons were probably the most productive, the ability to continue to communicate via social media is invaluable. This connection through digital media can provide a support network and a sense of community in relation to further digital media or technological advances in the future. In summary, I believe it's incredibly difficult to clearly conceptualise digital divide because of the range of varying factors, however it is clear that new and old divides do exist. Efforts to bridge these divides are increasingly evident in relation to both access and education, with the focus currently on educating to ensure adequate skills for usage. I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic either in the comments below or please feel free to reach out on any of my linked socials. Thank you for watching.